Hey friends, my name is Kat. Welcome to my channel, Boss Babe DIY. Today is part two in a four part video series that I'm doing where I show you how I transform a friend's guest room into a full walk-in closet. If you missed the first video where I give this dresser a full Hollywood Regency style makeover, I'll leave a link for that video in the description box below, or you can click on the link here above somewhere in this video. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how I completely refinished a depression era chest of drawers. This is the first First time I've done anything like this, so it was definitely a bit of a learning curve, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. So without further ado, I'll show you how I did it. I hope you guys enjoy. More dressers. All right, I found this beautiful dresser on Facebook Marketplace for $40. Um, this is from the 1940s. This was in the house of um, a woman who had passed away and her daughter was cleaning it out and trying to get rid of some of this furniture. So I took it off her hands. Um, obviously you can see there's some damage to the veneer here. So what I'm gonna try to do today is repair that. I've never patched veneer before, but I've watched some videos like I am wont to do and I'm going to attempt it. So, um, you know, cross your fingers, say, say a prayer to the crafting gods for me today because this is uh, a bit extensive, but I have faith in myself. Yeah, this piece is just so gorgeous. Look at this detail. Ugh, it's so pretty. And these handles, ugh. Look at that. I'm probably gonna do my vinegar treatment on these guys. It looks like they've taken some damage over the years, but they're just so beautiful. And it's such a unique piece. I definitely couldn't pass it up. For all of my patching process, I'll be using this tight bond glue I found that's made specifically for veneer. There were some little pieces on the top here of the veneer that had started coming up. Um, and since I definitely did not want to try to replace over this curved edge, my friend, uh, I just put some glue behind there. You can still see that there's a little bit of a seam here. I'm probably going to have to fill that in, sand it down some way, but um, yeah, I let it sit overnight. So hopefully that cured up okay. It's a tiny little spot over here too. So let's see how that turned out. Well, that stinks. I'll have to fix that now. All right. Put tape over this just so it didn't stick to the clamp. Any glue that may have gotten out. All right. It looks pretty good. It looks like it did the job. I'm going to be refinishing this whole top anyway, so uh, that's great. Since this chunk was a little bit wider, I went ahead and put, used a piece of scrap wood over it with that same tape trick. And uh, that seemed to be the way to go because now it didn't scratch up that edge on the other side. Lesson learned. Okay, let's see. This will come off. Okay. All right, looks good. It's not going anywhere. It's not peeling up. And like I said, I'm gonna be finishing this, refinishing this anyway, so that glue should just scrape right off. All right. I'm gonna be real honest. I have been pushing this off a little bit because it scares me. I have watched several videos and I feel confident that I can do it, but I'm going to try to take the finish off of the top here because you can see it's kind of cracked and there are a couple really big dents like over here and I just don't feel comfortable giving this to a client in this state. Luckily, um, you know, this drawer is fine. Obviously I have to fix the veneer on this, but otherwise the finish is pretty good. So I'm gonna try to Fill in these chips tonight. 
But right now, I'm gonna try to scrape this finish off. Since I know it is veneer, I am not going to try to sand it, um, especially since it's a little bit older, because when you sand it with like a palm sander, you really run the risk of sanding all the way through the veneer and then you're just kind of screwed. You'd have to completely replace the veneer. Um, since I'm not painting over this one, I'm just trying to bring the finish back up to a, a, a nice clean even state. So I'm going to be using a card scraper. Um, like I said, I've watched a few videos. I'm trying to get it out here. Okay. It's just this, you know, piece of metal um, and I'll uh, it's got, it's a little bit bird on the end. It's, I don't know if you can see that, but, um, I tested it out a little bit right over here. Oh, it scared me so badly, but you can see all the way under here, you can see where the finish was. And then that's the veneer underneath. Let's see if it'll focus. Eh, maybe not, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to get down just to that veneer, see if I can get these chips out, and then reseal it, and hope that it turns out looking okay. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, y'all. But I can do it. I think. I started by using the card scraper and you can see here that it's starting to peel up that first layer of the finish, but I quickly realized that this finish was a lot thicker than I initially thought it was and it took me a long time to get all the way through to that veneer base. So I ended up having to switch roots a little bit. A card scraper wasn't cutting it through this thick layer of finish, so I got this uh, little carbide scraper. And look, it comes with a holster. Cute my holster. I guess I need a. I guess I need a belt now. These carbide scrapers were definitely the way to go. They got through that thick finish so easily. I'm barely putting any pressure on here and it just glides all the way through to that veneer finish without scuffing it up or scratching it at all. Honestly, this was kind of like therapy. It was so soothing just standing in my basement and scraping all of this old finish off, getting down to that beautiful veneer underneath. Now, once I got all of the finish off of the top, I noticed there were still some of these deep gashes in the veneer. So what I'm doing is I'm digging in just a little bit deeper with my scraper, still being careful not to go all the way through the veneer and seeing if I can just get as much of that dent out as I possibly can. And it worked out pretty well. While I was scraping, I noticed a couple other places on the veneer that were a little bit loose, but I was able to go back pretty easily and glue those down as well. I found that this smaller carbide scraper was really great for all of the detailed areas of my piece. You'll notice that I'm scraping only in the direction of the grain. If I were to scrape across the grain, I run the risk of leaving a scratch across it and completely ruining my veneer. I didn't want to try to scrape around this curved edge of the dresser, so instead I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper to work through that finish. Once I was done removing the finish, I went back over everything with a 220 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. The last thing I'm doing before moving on to the drawers is wiping the whole top down with some mineral spirits. This does three things for me. It helps remove any leftover dust particles. 
it shows me if I've missed any finish on the piece. And lastly, it shows me how beautiful all that veneer is underneath that I've just revealed. Next, I moved on to cleaning the drawers. I started by vacuuming out all of the old cobwebs and dust, then I wiped everything down with a TSP cleaner, and I removed those beautiful handles for right now and set them aside. Something I think is really interesting about this dresser is each of the drawers are labeled. It looks like 1-9, but it's upside down, it's 6-1. And then this guy is 6-2. Then the other two are three and four. The very top one is completely different, so I'm guessing they're just trying to differentiate between the matching ones, but it's very helpful for me to know which order they go back in the dresser. Um, I don't know, it's really neat. I don't know if that was originally put on there when whoever made this originally made it back in the 30s or 40s, or if this got put on in process of a move or what, but some neat little, little history there going on with this dresser. I decided to seal the insides of all of the drawers with this high performance polyurethane in flat. Typically I wouldn't need to do this, but since this is a little bit older piece, it had just a hint of a smell to it. I tried to spray it down with some vinegar and water and that got out the majority of it, but I didn't want any kind of scent seeping into my client's clothes, so I sealed everything up and it took away the smell entirely. My trusty assistant is always here to help. What do you think, Ripley? Do you think we can fix it? Yeah? Oh, okay. Before I try to patch up the missing veneer pieces, there are a few places where the, um, the underlayment is starting to kind of come loose. So I'm just going to glue that up first. There are also a couple places that are just kind of chipped out that I'm gonna to have to fill with Bondo to give this veneer a good backing before I try to patch that up. I found this little glue applicator at a local hardware store and I found it to be really great for this project because it has these tiny little nozzles that are replaceable that allow me to get in those tiny little nooks and crannies of the piece without accidentally breaking off any of the veneer and getting nice coverage all the way down into the crack. Once the crack was filled, I just wiped away any excess glue with a wet rag. Then I covered the piece with a little bit of painter's tape to avoid having the glue stick to my clamp. And then I clamped it down like I did with the top of the dresser and waited for the piece to dry. I repeated the same process anywhere where the veneer or backing was coming up off of these drawers. So I know I said that I was gonna try to leave the finish on the drawers that was originally there since it was in pretty good shape, but I realized once I got to the part where I needed to replace the veneer that it would look really weird if part of the drawer had the original finish and then those little pieces had a new finish. So I just went ahead and scraped off the old finish using the same carbide scrapers that I used on the top. Once again, I'm scraping here in the direction of the grain. Luckily, the finish on the drawers was a lot thinner than the finish on the top, so this process actually went very quickly. Now that I've got all these drawers stripped and sanded down, it is time to get these veneer patches in. You can see the veneer just has chipped away over time. Um, luckily, the rest of it is, you know, glued down pretty smoothly. I glued down a couple of those edges. Um, some of it's chipped way off. I may need to fill this in with Bondo. I'm gonna see if I can get away with gluing the patch on and then filling it afterwards if it still needs it. 
I did go ahead and test out a veneer patch over here on this drawer. I'm obviously not done with it, but can you see where I put it? Can you see the patch? Boop. It's right here. This little strip I patched in and the wood grain matches so well that I literally had to go searching for it <laughs> right before I filmed this. So I love that. Um, I'll show you how I did that uh, with these other ones and then I'm going to um, wipe it all down with some mineral spirits to see if this is going to be an actual color match once I seal it or if I'm going to have to do a gel stain over the whole thing. We will see. After examining the drawers a little more closely, I realized I was going to have to fill in all of these little chipped out pieces before I tried to put veneer on top of them. To do this, I decided to use Bondo Wood Filler. This is a two-part wood filler that dries super hard and really fast and has been great for a lot of my furniture projects. I will say if you are doing Bondo, you want to do this in a well-ventilated area and even then you might want to use a face mask because this stuff is pungent. Now the trick with Bondo is to scoop out just a little bit of the base and then stir in your cream hardener. Once you start stirring in the cream hardener, it activates the Bondo, so you only have maybe five to seven minutes to work with it before it fully hardens. Clearly I need to get some smaller tools for future furniture pieces, but um, if you're doing this at home, try to get as much in there as you can without overfilling because you are going to have to sand any excess back and like I said, this stuff dries really hard. I let this dry for about 10 minutes just to be on the safe side and then I sanded back any excess with a 60 grit sandpaper and then once I got it pretty flush I sanded the rest of it with 120 and then eventually 220 grit to get it nice and smooth for my veneer patches. Probably one of the most difficult things about repairing a piece like this is finding a veneer that matches very closely with the original wood grain. Luckily I was able to find this mahogany veneer at a local hardware store and it matches pretty close so I was really happy with it. Now in my research about veneer patching I found that it was very difficult to try to patch along all of those jagged little pieces that have chipped out over time. So what I found to be a lot easier was to create a new clean line that I could patch a piece into pretty easily on the back end. And that should hide the grain pretty well once I got everything patched. So I used an X-Acto knife and a straight edge to create a clean new line for my veneer patch to go in. And I chipped away any leftover veneer pieces and sanded back any glue that was still stuck to the underlayment. This part takes a little bit of finessing because you want to make sure that your patch fits in as closely as you can to your original wood grain. You don't want any gaps in there. So once you cut down your veneer piece, you may have to do a little bit of sanding or scraping down of the edges to make sure it fits nice and snugly. Once I got my patches to a shape I was happy with, I applied a very thin layer of glue and used that same tape and clamp technique and let that glue set overnight. Now you may notice that my patch is actually hanging over the edge of the drawer and I promise this is intentional. Once everything is dry, I'm going to go back with an X-Acto knife to cut off the excess and sand it down flush with the edge of this drawer.
Then I basically repeated this process what felt like a million times to get all of those chipped out pieces filled. So I mentioned before that this is a depression era dresser. And what makes depression era furniture unique is that they were built in a time when clearly it was really difficult for people to afford really nice furniture. So what they did is they built really solid pieces of furniture and then would use these thin layers of veneer over the top that were really ornate to give it this feel of being really expensive and really nice without having to break the bank. And I, I just love that history behind it. All right, after a few hours of meticulous work, I got all of the chipped out pieces patched and I have to say it looks pretty darn good. Now you can kind of see the pieces, but overall it's not too noticeable. My last step with these drawers for now is to sand everything back with a 320 grit sandpaper to get the surface nice and smooth. And then I went back over everything with those mineral spirits to clean up the excess dust and to see how well my veneer patches match the original wood. So you can see it's not an exact color match, but it is pretty darn close. I honestly don't know if I could get any closer than that. And I'm going to be going over all of this with a stain anyway. My last bit of repair is going to be along the bottom of this dresser. Now, it clearly had this beautiful ornate piece that went all the way along the bottom, but this little left detail was missing and there was no way I was gonna be able to find something that matched. So unfortunately, these pieces needed to go. I just used my putty knife to gently remove them and then removed any nails that were still sticking out. At this point, you can probably guess what my next steps will be. I removed the finish with my scraper, sanded everything back, and applied mineral spirits. I also decided to repair the feet on this piece, so I used my 120 grit sandpaper to remove the finish from these curved edges. Now that everything is finally prepped, it's time to move on to the refinishing process. Since my new veneer isn't an exact match for the original, I decided to cover all of my unfinished pieces with this General Finishes gel stain, and I'm using a sponge applicator to apply it. Now, if you've never used a gel stain before, the consistency is a lot thicker than your typical oil-based stain. You can see here, it's about the consistency of chocolate pudding. And the big difference between the two is that your typical oil-based stain will seep into a porous wood and the wood will soak that up and the gel-based stain sits on top of the wood. So if I did need to go back and sand this down, it'll be really easy for me to remove that top layer. Also, it does a better job of sitting on top of the old veneer and the new veneer to give it a more uniform finish as opposed to soaking into the potentially different wood grains and giving it a different color. A little bit of this gel stain goes a long way. So I'm applying a very thin coat to start and then wiping back any excess with a clean rag. I ended up doing about two coats of this stain before sealing it.
I use the same process on the bottom of the dresser as well as the top, making sure to tape off any parts that I didn't want to get stain on. I really hate the way the stain went on to this top drawer with the two or three pieces. Uh, it's a different wood and it just looked weird and I tried to sand it down a little bit and now it just looks dirty. So I'm just going to take the stain entirely off and call this an accent drawer. Remember how I said that gel stain was a lot easier to sand back if you made any mistakes? Yeah, well it came in very handy in this moment. I was able to easily sand everything back to the original wood grain. Once I let my stain fully cure, I sealed everything with this Verithane water-based polyurethane in satin. Now I've mentioned this in a couple of my previous videos, but polyurethane like this will typically go on this milky white color, but it will dry down completely clear. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I am a sucker for an egregious tape peel. So enjoy this little bit of ASMR on me. For my finishing touch on this piece, I'm applying a thin coat of wax to each of the drawer slides to keep these 90 year old drawers from sticking in the dresser. And just like that, my depression era chest of drawers refinishing is complete. Is it a perfect makeover? Certainly not. I still have a lot to learn about veneer patching and you can still see some chips and dents in the original finish where I chose not to update, but honestly, I think it gives it a lot of character. You can see the years it's been through and the love that it's had. And I'm so excited to put this in my client's new closet room. It fits in perfectly with her vintage pieces and the overall style she's going with. And I'm just really happy with how this whole thing turned out. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button or leave me a comment below. Or if you've got any tips or tricks for refinishing furniture, I am always open to improvement. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss parts three and four in this closet transformation. Until then, we'll see you next time.